What's good, everybody? This is Dario Hunt from Living Life Fearless. I'm back with another reaction, this time to Dying to Live by Kodak Black. So let's talk about it. I just put up a reaction to Gucci Man's last album, so it's only fitting that I also react to Kodak Black's latest album because I consider him to basically be the almost direct offspring of Gucci Man himself. They seem to sort of have that same kind of persona and their stories and legal troubles are very similar and musically they also kind of align. But whereas on Gucci Man's last album, I had a problem of it feeling just so much of the same and really feeling like he lacks the rapping tools to really deliver and portray his story in an exciting way. But with Kodak Black, I surprisingly found out and think that he does have those tools to deliver these tales about his life and everything surrounding it in interesting ways. And it is the reason why I even really became a fan of him because in the first place, when I first heard of him, I really kind of wrote him off as sort of another one of these here today, gone tomorrow rappers in this mumble rap wave. But once I really gave his music a listen, I found out that there's so much more to him than what meets the eye. Because as much trouble and as much outside noise and just shenanigans surrounding his name can distract from his music and how the media kind of portrays him as a dumb individual, or you might take him as a dumb individual because of some of the things he does, when it comes to the music, you kind of see that there is a much smarter, self-aware side of him than you might expect. Because for only a 21 year old to be speaking about these, you know, tough issues and tragic issues in such a mature manner as he does in a lot of his raps, you don't really expect that, especially when you look at some of his peers, just looking in Florida alone, like Lil Pump and his whole crew, whatever. There is a stark difference between the way they rap and the way they deliver and just the things that they talk about and what seems to matter to each of them. Because although he may want to come off as aloof in interviews and as somebody who just doesn't give a fuck, you can really tell he does in his music. And he speaks about a lot of these hood and street stories and circumstances in ways that you don't really get from this new generation. There's a rawness, there's an authenticity to the things he says and the way he says them that really pulls you in to his stories and makes you feel what he's feeling when he's talking about these songs. And the way he raps and delivers, even though it can be awkward at times, it's not the only way he's different than a lot of this new generation of rappers, his beat selection, is wildly different than anything else really out there and popular at the time. He mostly stays away from those generic trap beats and goes for that more unique, soulful, um, real type of production than what you would typically expect and get from, you know, an artist like him. So once again, I found myself really taken aback by how real and raw some of his music sounds and some of the way some of his music actually hits home. And that it really made me connect with him even more and really made me feel like he has something important to say and makes me want to hear more of what he has to say. Not on every single song, to be clear, but the songs that do, they really do. Songs like Close to the Grave, Calling My Spirit, Malcolm XXX, uh, Testimony, they all hit home in really meaningful ways. And it just makes for really dope, unexpected listen. So while, you know, Dying to Live may not have as many massive hits as some of his peers, even though ZZ was supposed to be this huge hit and definitely has the potential to be, 
but thanks to some weird choices when it came to the features, I don't really think it reached its potential. But despite that, you know, dying to live, I think will have a last, longer lasting impact with me and will have me coming back to it more often than a lot of the other stuff that is just kind of the microwave type of music because it does have deeper content to it and he does have actually something to say. And what he does have to say is generally interesting. Despite, you know, a lot of the appearances and impressions I might've had of him otherwise. So I know like controversy sells and, you know, we are all human beings and I know he's a young guy and, you know, everybody can be kind of a walking contradiction at times. I just wish that his music at times was allowed to speak louder than a lot of the actions and outside stuff that surrounds him. But when it comes to telling stories about like the project life and a lot of those circumstances that surround it, he is definitely one of the best ones at it at the moment. He is clearly somebody who was raised, who's influenced directly by that lifestyle and really lived it and really earned that name Project Baby. And there's certainly an authenticity to him that you just can't manufacture. But for those of you that did hear the project, what do you guys think about it? How do you think it stacks up to a lot of his other stuff? Um, if you weren't really a fan of him before, did this really change your mind at all? Do you think he has a story to tell and do you find the way he delivers it to be interesting? Let me know in the comments down below and be sure to head over to the official site where you can leave your own ratings and reactions to this album, other albums, and everything else I react to over there on the site. If you have anything that you would personally like me to react to, you can also let me know in the comments down below. And if you like any of the gear that I rock in these videos, you can grab some like this and this in the store for yourself. As always, thank you guys for joining me. If you are liking these videos, please smash that like and subscribe button for me. I'll be back shortly with more reactions, but until then, I will catch you guys soon. Peace.